I'm Will Gibson, uh, and I'm the final final producer for JS Design. I think it's been a family connection. Um, my grandmother uh, was a, a black sheep breeder um, and was quite big into handcraft, used for her wool, and also a great uncle of mine um, was a fairly uh, instrumental uh, person in the black and coloured uh, sheep breeding scene for many years uh, and I've had quite a lot of help from him um, in regards to sheep and uh, wool and industry through him so um, yeah and, and a passion for wool and a passion for something something a wee bit different you know not just the, the run of the mill white fleece that um, you know anyone can sort of just about produce. I was I think 10 years old it's be it'll be my 11th year of breeding uh, coming up this year so it's been going for a while now uh, starting off with five ewes in that first year and, and growing through to uh, hopefully around 160 ewes uh, having lambs this year. Through my breeding program I'm always trying to increase fleece weights with keeping micron uh, to the level that I'm wanting. Uh, so hopefully around 4Ks, 4.5Ks off, off my ewes of good usable wool and around that 2.5 to 3kgs off my uh, first shorn hoggets. Yeah, quality is hugely important. Um, and I know exactly for what you're wanting to do with the wool, you need a quality product to be able to produce the quality um, of, of a product that you're selling. So it starts, you know, it's a 12 month process having quality wool. From the time that you've shorn those ewes or those sheep through to next year's shearing, feeding is crucial. Uh, they've got to be on a level plane and, you know, kept very constant. Um, that and ensures that the fleece length and our fleece strength will be good through to that second uh, shearing. Um, and also when it comes to actually harvesting the wool, we put a lot of work into, into bringing these sheep through for a year. Um, the shearers and the wool handlers have to be of an extremely high level so that when the fleece actually is coming off the sheep and is being um, sorted and, and skirted and removed of you know, the, the, the fleece wool that isn't up to standard, um, that everything is of that high standard, so the quality that does come through is you know, right at that top end. Um, and I myself am a, um, I've, I've gained my certificate in wool technology, so that means that I am a you know, registered wool classer, and that really ensures that um, you know, I know what the wool has to be and how it has to perform when it gets to processing. So having that knowledge um, in the wool sheet at the time of um, harvest. Is, is really important and pretty crucial in having a quality product. I think in the early days it was very much selecting for a type. Um, with limited numbers it's pretty hard to select for, for colour um, because you still need the quality and the, and the style of the fleece to come through before you get too, too worried about anything else. Mm -hmm. um, now with a wee bit more scale coming to the operation um, and the background breeding of, of style um, coming through it can be broken down into colour much more easily now. Um, so that, that makes um, probably change in selection a wee bit. Um, still keep that style and, and the fleece quality there, but try and you know, really breed into colours um, to make it easier on uh, processing down the track. Or really to be you know, a, a very sustainable and economic part of the, of the farming unit that we run here. Um, you know, at the moment it's it's still building and, and ever increasing and it is quite an exciting prospect because there is not a lot in the way of uh, a larger coloured sheep fox in New Zealand. Um, so I think to, you know, to, to still increase numbers um, which will increase volume of wool uh, but continue to keep the same quality and, uh, and those sort of factors as I was when I only had five or six. Um, so you know Yes, quantity is good, but still having that quality, um, and you know, make make a real name for the for the quality product that is being being produced off the farm. And the merino, um, for a start, it is the the pinnacle of, of wool. Um, you know, be it all breeds and all types, uh, it is extremely soft uh, and fine. So easy to wear against the skin. It's a it's a quality product, and it's easy to be able to make uh, quality clothing um, and accessories with it. Um, also when it comes to actually breeding them there's a lot of work goes in and there has been for years into you know, producing these fibres and, and that and I think that's lost 
a lot of traction in New Zealand with um, the shift away from uh, from wool. So I think my, my passion still lies with producing wool and, and producing a really good product um, and doing something that, you know, it's not easy. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of effort to do it. Uh, but a lot of people have, have moved away and, and I think it shows a bit of a bit of guts and a bit of resilience to stay with something that probably hasn't been the easiest and probably, you know, in, in some years it's probably not the you know, the smartest decision to be doing, but if you're passionate about something, I think that counts for a lot more than you know, just doing something that makes money. Um, you know, it is nice to, to turn over a bit of money, but and, and it does, but a quality product and something that you're proud of is, is something pretty special, and the Marino does that for me.